Mario, with the discoveries in uh, cosmology showing the enormous number of uh, planetary systems, we used to not know about planetary systems, now we know that they are very prevalent and, and even the number of, uh, of uh, planets and habitable zones are in the multiple billions in our galaxy and there are maybe two trillion galaxies, the so-called Fermi pa paradox where Enrico Fermi just said at lunch one day, supposedly, that's the uh, apocryphal story, where are they? In other words, with so many and so obvious and make the calculations and great, you know, the universe is teeming with them, but we, we haven't seen any. Um, how, do you, how do you deal with that? Well, there are many, many possible explanations to the Fermi paradox and the fact that there are many possible explanations means, means that there is no one explanation that everybody accepts. But one explanation that I more recently started to like more and more uh, is the following. Uh, you see, there are some futurists, Ray Kurzweil, for example, that argue that in not too long, we will reach what is called the singularity, which, is, which means artificial intelligence will basically catch up with us and become more powerful than our, than our intelligence. Now, I don't mean by that just, you know, that they will be able to make more calculations. That computers do already today. I'm talking about a different kind of machines, machines that will actually develop consciousness, you know, if that is possible. So they will be more intelligent than us, it will have the, our type of consciousness, and they will be dominant over us. And this could happen depending on which <laughs> futurist you talk to. Could be in a few decades or, you know, a few centuries, maybe never, or, you know, maybe a few millennia. But it is not inconceivable that it can happen. And given how fast technology is advancing, it could even happen in not too long. Now, once that happens, it means that intelligence now is going towards this type of species. Namely, it could mean that biological intelligence may be a short phase in the evolution of intelligence in the universe. These types of civilizations, if they are out there, they don't have to be even on the surface of a planet. Because while gravity was helpful for biological evolution, it is actually a hindering for this type of thing. So they could be in space, around a star, they still would need a source of energy. But they could be, you know, around a star in space, not even tied to a surface of a planet. And these types of machines, since they could be so much more advanced than us, we might not be able even to comprehend, you know, what they're doing, what it is, not any signals. We may have no communication. I'm going to leave aside the question of consciousness for, uh, uh, for artificial intelligence, which is a whole other vast area which I've been known to have some opinions about. But I would uh, offer you the observation that your response to the, the Fermi paradox, talking about artificial intelligence, makes it worse, not better. Because if there is artificial intelligence and able to go past the so-called singularity, then it becomes multiplicative in terms of, of, uh, of its uh, reproductive capabilities because it could just mine the, the metallic surfaces of whatever it has and, it, and, and go faster and faster exponentially. That's the concept that generates a singularity. And so if you do that, the concept of a so-called uh, von Neumann probe, which are self-replicating artificial intelligence entities that would go out into space from whatever the source is, uh, would multiply so you can calculate that within, people do different calculations, but a million years they would fill every planet in the, in the Milky Way. Correct. Because of exponential uh, expansion. And so the conclusion that you could come to is if that were the case, there can't be one. Because if there were one and it had the exponential expansion, there's plenty of time for a million years to fit into our ga a galaxy and we'd see them every place. Well, but how do you know that you will see them? They could be nanobots. They could be t tiny things that you can, don't even know how to detect or how to find. Yeah. So they could be everywhere or they could be where they want to be. 
they, you see, they don't have to be everywhere because they may not be interested in large parts of the galaxy. Uh, but yes, uh, you know, maybe it makes it in some sense the paradox uh, worse because there are many of them. But at the same time, since you have no idea how these things look like or how to communicate with them, then, you know, it's, it's hard to know whether you I think you that's an them. absolutely legitimate argument, but it's an argument for a single case. Because that case may be a nanobot. That case may not want to visit us. That case may want uh, to be totally hidden. Uh, and, and so there are a lot of these specific cases. But there are billions of possibilities and so if, if you I, I did not say that there are billions of these artificial intelligences they may still be rare right but even if they're rare if they're just a handful I mean you can you can explain away one or two or three but you my point is you only need one to fall outside your explanation I, to I see don't it. I don't think that that this business of you know colo colonialization yeah, yeah. of the galaxy is is, is a problem, honestly, because that assumes some sort of a human psychology. I don't know. It, it, there are many assumptions that go into that. And I, I don't see that as the thing. I, I wrote an article just last year saying that maybe one of the things that is perhaps something that should characterize uh, an alien civilization is actually some sort of energy consumption uh -huh. you see uh, all civilizations appear to need energy yeah, okay. and there are only two ways that i'm aware of how you get lots of energy uh, one is uh, through if you can control few have controlled fusion which you know then you can use a lot of you, you can have lots of energy and the second is if you build these constructions which are referred to as dyson, dyson. spheres right. which are these things that collect much of the energy of your host star. Right. In both of these cases, there will be a, there is a waste heat, and that waste oh. heat will be emitted as infrared radiation. So one of the ways to try to look for right. alien civilizations is to look for unusual infrared sources. Mm -hmm. And some people are doing that, actually. In principle, by the way, they could actually use their entire galaxy and not just a star. That's amazing. So, uh, amazing. yes, so I think it's interesting to look for very unusual infrared sources. Now, again, I will not suppose I found one. Actually, there are about five that look a bit strange, but I wouldn't immediately mm -hmm. jump to the conclusion that it's an alien civilization. So we have these different modalities that we can look. We can look for the signature in, in, in the uh, biosphere uh, through starlight, through transiting. We can look at uh, radio signals. We can look at infrared now. So that, that's exciting. Right. That's very exciting. And so if you and I were sitting here, you know, 100 years from today or 500 years from today, 1,000 years, and we still hadn't found anything. With all the new technologies, then, then what would you say? Then we probably would have to, you know, be able to put some meaningful numerical constraints and say, okay, then life has to be more rare in an in a Earth-sized planet, in a habitable zone of its star or something like that. You know, life cannot happen more than in 1% of the cases or you know, or a smaller number if you want, uh, and that would be it. Uh, it is not, look, with all the numbers I told you, I told you that there are billions of, of planets yeah. in, in our own Milky Way galaxy. We don't know if that number is large or small. It depends large or small compared to what? Yeah. You know, what is the probability for intelligent life to emerge? We don't know that number. What I can tell you is that in the universe as a whole, for there not to have ever been another intelligent civilization, the probability for that to emerge has to be less than something like 10 to the minus, I don't know, tens, large number of tens. Because if we know that in our own, essentially one over the number of Earth-sized <laughs> planets in habitable zones in the entire universe. Mm. So, and that's a very large number. So unless the probability for life emerging is exceedingly small, there must have been another technological civilization somewhere in the universe. 
But mind you, for practical purposes, really only our galaxy counts because we will not search for life elsewhere in any time soon. Mm -hmm. So in, in our own galaxy, if the, the probability could be less than one in 10 billion, what do I know? So maybe we are the first or something. You, but you know what? If that is the case, this puts such a heavy burden of responsibility on our shoulders. You know, what, we are the only intelligent <laughs> civilization in the Milky Way? I mean, so we better keep this, this one living, you know, and not destroy things. So, yeah.